I'm Les Wright and my entry into the 2021 Hackaday Prize is the Raspberry Pi spectrometer. Um, the motivation behind this project is I wanted a spectrometer to be able to measure spectra of things and it turns out that commercial units are, are you know, thousands of dollars, sometimes tens of thousands of dollars. Even small modules that some manufacturers are now producing still run north of 300 bucks. Um, and I wanted to build something that was um, easy to build. Um, like, you know, the physical hardware build is like easy. You don't have to do any complex alignment or anything. Um, I wanted something inexpensive uh, using off the shelf parts as it was basically accessible to everybody. Um, and so this is what I came up with. Uh, this should be suitable for uh, amateur use. So if you want to explore the electromagnetic spectrum, this is an actually a very, very useful instrument. Um, I would go so far as to say it would easily find a place in schools and colleges as well for classroom demonstrations. Um, everything's open source. Um, as I've said, this is mostly a software development project. Um, all of that software and the hardware list has all been put up on GitHub and Hackaday. Uh, and you know everybody's free to modify it to fit their needs as they see fit. Um, let's take a quick look at this on the bench and see how it works and then we'll do a quick software demonstration. So here is the hardware itself. We've got a Raspberry Pi 4 and we do need a Pi 4 because we're processing an awful lot of data. And then for the spectrometer itself, it merely comprises of a diffraction grating spectroscope, a zoom lens which you can pick up very, very easily off eBay, and then a Pi camera with an M12 mount. Um, everything else is just bits of scrap aluminium to uh, align all of this stuff. Um, alignment's very, very simple. We basically point the camera into the end of the diffraction grating spectroscope and we're done. Um, we have to do a bit of calibration, but it's very, very easily done as well. Uh, this is actually the prototype, and the final version is actually this, um, which is very, very small. Uh, it weighs just 50 grams, and we've got a diminutive version of the, uh, of the spectroscope there, um, a small M12 lens, and uh, yet again, a Pi camera mounted on the back, and it makes for a very, very nice compact unit uh, for integration into other projects. Let's take a look at the software, and we'll see what we can see. So all of the hardware and software build is hosted on my GitHub. Uh, as I've said, it's open source under the Apache 2.0 license, so everybody's free to do with it whatever they wish. Um, if they want to alter the software, that's entirely up to them. Um, if we scooch down through the README uh, real quick, all of the build instructions are in here. The links to the YouTube videos, you know, demonstrating this thing doing stuff um, is on there. Um, yeah, we've got the list of materials, um, software installation, and how to calibrate the thing. Uh, calibration is very, very easy. Uh, we just need two uh, light sources of known wavelengths. Laser pointers will do just fine. Um, we point them at the spectroscope and when the peaks appear, we click on them and then enter the values of those two wavelengths in there. Click calibrate and we're done. Um, so a very, very easy to use piece of software. Uh, the rest of the README has some examples, um, various use cases as well, uh, which is pretty useful. Uh, we'll take a look at the software real quick. Um, I've got a live view just here. I've got the spectrometer set up on the bench pointed at a fluorescent tube. Um, we can see a nice little preview window which gives us a live camera feed down the um, spectroscope itself. Um, as we can see, we're already calibrated with two wavelengths, uh, 532 and 405. Uh, and then we've got our all important graph. Um, the peaks in the graph are all labeled, um, which is really, really handy as well. You know, you don't have to read the graticule. We've got uh, peaks labeled themselves. And down at the bottom, we've got various controls for uh, altering, uh, you know, the, the detection um, of the peaks. So if we want to see, if we want to see lots of peaks, we can just turn this all the way down. And if we want to see um, a few peaks, um, we can sort of sit it in the middle there. Uh, we've got a feature on here called peak hold. Um, if I hit it, we can see that the graph sort of stabilizes and it actually integrates um, over time, which is very, very useful. Very, very useful for capturing very short-lived events. Um, so like the flash of a camera, for example, uh, we can capture those very, very easily using peak hold. Um, we've got a snapshot function as well. And if you click it and look in your source folder from your software, um, it actually stores the main graph area as a PNG um, that you can open at a later date and it actually stores uh, things with time and date as the file name, which is kind of useful. Uh, it also exports CSV as well, um, which means that we can then import this stuff into LibreOffice Calc, for example, or any other program. Um, it spits out our wavelength data and our intensity data. And then, of course, we can plot this in a very, very nice graph. Uh, maybe export it to other programs. I don't know, import it into MATLAB and do whatever it is that you want to do with it. Um, yeah, all in all, a really nice, lean, clean um, software interface, uh, minimal clutter. Um, you know, personally, I, I'm very, very proud of this project. It seems to have worked out very, very well. Thanks very much for taking the time to view my project. I really hope you enjoyed it.